there are two main ways that orbitals can overlap, and that, that can be a head-to-head -head overlap. That's called a sigma bond, and if you're thinking this looks like it's Greek, it is. Or you have a side-to-side -side overlap, which is a pi bond. So s orbitals can only overlap in a, in a sigma bond. So if you have an s orbital, s orbital, so there's one s orbital, here's another s orbital, and that overlap there, that's, like, that's a sigma bond. Every single bond, a single bond, not a double or triple, every single bond is a sigma, sigma overlap. So single bonds have sigma overlap. So anytime two s orbitals overlap, that's a single bond, it's a sigma bond. Another type of sigma bond can arise when you have two p orbitals overlapping in this way. So remember, p orbitals you have um, they can you know be in three different on three different axes. Right, you can have an s orbital there, there, and then one coming in or out at you. Right, so on each one of the axes. And if two s orbitals or sorry, two p orbitals overlap, you know this way, head to head, that overlap is a sigma overlap. So there's two types of sigma bonds we have here, right? Between two s orbitals and the two p orbitals. And then p orbitals can also overlap this way, right? If you had them overlapping that way. Uh, that is one overlap. And then that can happen in the different dimensions. So they can come at each other this way or um, that way. So think, um, so that side to side overlap is a, is a pi bond. So you have sigma bonds and pi bonds. So a single bond, if you had Something like just an H, H bond, right? That's an overlap of two s orbitals. That's a single bond, and it's a sigma overlap, a sigma bond. If you had something that looked like um, this guy with a double bond in the middle, that double bond is one sigma overlap and one pi overlap. And we're going to see more pictures on the next page. And then if you had something like nitrogen, the triple bond. That triple bond in it has one sigma bond and then two pi bonds. So let's look a little bit more at what these really look like. Um, the more multiple bonds you have, so you have a single bond, a single bond is going to be long and kind of weak, a double bond is going to be shorter and stronger, and then a triple bond will be even, uh, even stronger and shorter. All right, so multiple bonds here. You can see these overlaps. Um, so the purple are the purple. Orbitals are hybridized orbitals, um, and so that's a sigma overlap there. You can see it's a head-to-head -head overlap. Um, the pink ones here are the non-hybridized um, p orbitals, and so that's a side that's a side-to-side -side overlap. That's a pi bond. So in this um, this picture here, which is really if I want to draw it out like this guy, you have sig single bonds. Those are your sigma overlaps here. And then this double bond is a sigma and a pi. So the purple overlapping is the sigma overlap, and then the uh, pink one, that's your pi. If you had something um, like this guy, we have right acetylene. Is that C? C2H2. OK. You have a triple bond here. Triple bond has a sigma and two pi, so where does that come from? So first, let's look at, that's the sigma overlap, and then you see these pink overlaps here. This, this, sorry, the pink orbitals are the p orbitals, and they're gonna overlap in um, two ways. Right, so you have there, and then you have these guys, and then one in the back. Um, so each one of those two lines really represents one um, pi bond. And so you have two pi bonds here, two pi bonds there, and then one sigma. So it's a sigma and two pi's. So let's see a couple of sample questions here. Um, so if we're looking at this molecule, they want us to predict the bond angles around each carbon atom. So we need to figure out you know, what type of carbon is this based on the Lewis structure. Don't just use the picture and look at this and say, oh, that's a perfect 90 degree angle. That's not true. It's not drawn to scale. You need to figure out what type of carbon that is. So figure out how many electron domains does this carbon have, which the Lewis structure is already done for you. It has one, two, three, four electron domains. So that means it's tetrahedral, which means the, it, it's sp3 hybridized, right? Because it's got four electron domains. Um, and that makes the bond angles for that first carbon 109.5. The second carbon has one, two electron domains. It's linear. And the bond angles there are going to be 180 degrees. Um, to describe the hybridization, well, that first one we said is sp3. 
because it has four electron domains, and that second carbon only has two electron domains, so that's just sp hybridized. So you should be able to connect all these pieces, the bond, be able to draw the Lewis structure if they gave that to you, predict the bond angles, um, figure out what the shape is, what's the hybridization, and then finally determine the number of, of sigma and pi bonds. So I would count up all the all the single bonds and then all the multiple bonds and then and then figure out from there. So I have one, two, three, four single bonds, right? Singles. I have four. I don't have any doubles and I have one triple. Triple is one. So single bonds, I, I definitely have four sigmas. And then for the single bonds, and then the triple bond is one sigma and two pi. So overall, I have five sigma and two pi bonds in that molecule. So now we can look a little bit more at resonance structures and delocalized electrons. So remember when we were writing Lewis structures for something like NO3 minus, we would we would draw the Lewis structure. And you'd figure out you had nitrogen. I'll just start with the Lewis structure. Right, and we have a double bond there. Um, or we could move that double bond and you really have nitrogen, maybe that double bond's there. Or you can draw it so that the double bond's over here. And the real structure doesn't look like any of these exactly. It looks like a hybrid of all of them where that extra like double bond character is kind of shared throughout. So this is, you know, local, uh, this picture over here is kind of like localizing that, that extra electron pair between that N and O, and then you can rotate it around. But really what happens is that electron density, those electrons are kind of shared evenly between all of the, um, all of the oxygens, between that nitrogen and all the oxygen. So this is what we say, it's delocalized. Localized means it's stuck in one, one place. Delocalized means it's kind of like spread out between all of them. Yeah. Um, so when you have resonance structures like this, and again, this is these should all be in brackets. So drawing all these resonance structures doesn't really show the whole the whole picture. Um, being able to draw the delocalized electrons kind of shows a little bit more about what's really going on. And then all these bond angles and bond distances are the same. It's completely symmetric. So all all the p orbitals on the um, on the oxygens are overlapping with the p orbitals on the central ni nitrogen. So you have this kind of delocalized electrons. They're not located exactly on one. We see this with um, benzene too. So if you were to draw, you'll see benzene a lot in, um, in organic chemistry. Uh, different ways to represent it here. So you can see it with you know localized electrons. Uh, they have an, another way to kind of draw this is I have six carbons in a ring. That six, I hope so, with alternating single and double bonds. Uh, in re and then the resonance structure for that guy, I would just move all the uh, double bonds around. Right, so now I have it here, in here, and there. Um, sometimes, you know, the real structure looks like a hybrid of both of those. Uh, so this is kind of showing it with localized electrons, the, the double bonds there, but really it's more delocalized and this really changes the um, electronic structure of, of benzene and gives it interesting properties that we'll learn more about later. Um, so the even distribution of, of the pi electrons here in benzene makes the molecule unusually stable. So it's, it's, it's really stable. So we will talk about that again later. You'll see that again in organic chemistry. Um, a lot of times in organic chemistry, you'll just symbolize it like that instead of having to draw both Lewis structures out. Um, and you don't even show all the hydrogens. These do have you know hydrogen on each end. Each one of those carbons has a hydrogen to make sure that uh, carbon has four bonds.